Marshall Zellinger continues our reporting on how Colorado's Republicans are now turning their unproven election fraud claims on each other. We do believe that the election should be rerun um, and that this court should order a special election. This court hearing in Denver is about one vote. One vote that kept Republican State Representative Mary Bradfield from getting enough support at the House District 21 Assembly in El Paso County. One vote that kept her from qualifying for the primary ballot along with Carl Dent, who did get enough support. Can you please tell the court how you voted? I voted for Carl Dent. Republicans in that district want the vote of that delegate, the voice you heard in court. They want to have a Denver district judge invalidate that one vote. They say she should not have been allowed to be a delegate for not appearing in person at a previous meeting. And if she didn't vote, Bradfield would have qualified for the ballot. No new method of voting may be selected by this body. This is a separate issue from what happened this weekend. At the Colorado Republican State Assembly, Danielle Neuschwanger was a candidate for governor who did not get enough support to qualify for the ballot. And she told party chairwoman Christy Burton Brown that the clickers used to vote are to blame. You know what? I'm going to see you in court and I'm going to make sure if you committed any fraud that you are behind bars. A Douglas County delegate shared two videos with us, though neither are examples of trying to vote for Neuschwanger or the governor's race. This video supposedly shows an example of an attempt to vote for Secretary of State without the clicker confirming the vote counted. This second video is supposedly showing a vote in the Senate race, which eventually says the word counted. The Republican Party is supposed to be doing an audit of the votes and posting the results online sometime today. We have two issues with the clickers. We have complaints that people who were supposed to be allowed to vote somehow did not have that vote counted. With the court hearing, it's that someone who didn't show up to perhaps one step of the process voted in the next step and the argument is that she should not have been allowed to vote. Kyle, the party that pushes election integrity is currently having a tough time with election integrity. And one of the issues at the party convention is there a suggestion that they should all vote on paper ballots. And mm -hmm. that's now part of what, like the state party platform that in Colorado, Republicans say, let's get rid of um, any kind of like electronic voting, electronic tabulation, that kind of thing, just go to paper. The people who voted on Saturday, 3,705 total votes were maximum number of votes. So if you had multiple candidates for multiple races, and on the off chance that you had to go to multiple ballots, like you didn't get enough, you didn't mm -hmm. get one candidate in one race and you had to vote again. Just picture 3,705 paper ballots and then counting and expecting that result in the same day. And they had to get out of that building by midnight. So there was no change to how you voted by paper. You were doing it electronically in Colorado Springs. And that was a problem for the people who booed immediately. And the majority of the people in that building were booing that they couldn't vote by paper. What a mess. All right, primary ballots set. On we go. Marshall, thank you. So the candidates that come out of the GOP assembly join those who petitioned onto the primary ballot. Different path. So in your big races, you get Greg Lopez and Heidi Ganahl for governor, Ron Hanks and Joe Day for Senate, Tina Peters and Pam Anderson for Secretary of State. Uh, the only one that's not wild is uh, John Kellner for, on the attorney general ballot. He's alone, but there was an election denier type who made it onto the ballot at the assembly, but then he got booted over questions about whether he was an attorney licensed in Colorado or a Republican. It was a wild weekend.